Hello, welcome to another episode of the Health First Group podcast. Today we have Courtney, who is one of our physios over in Western Australia. Uh, Courtney is a South African physio. She's been with us for uh, a little over 12 months. Uh, so welcome today, Courtney. How is it over in Kalgoorlie today? Yeah, um, thank you for having me. It's a good day today. Um, it's a little bit the weather's the side is a bit cold still. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. Busy morning. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, you, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, Courtney? Uh, you uh, did, uh, I believe, a community service year over in South Africa. And uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that and how you came to uh, come over to Australia? Awesome. Um, yeah, so I graduated in 2018 from Stellenbosch University. Um, and once you graduate in South Africa, you are required to work for the government for one year. Um, and so, yeah, I did my community, which is we call community service. So um, did my community service here in a very small little farming town um, in a hospital that hadn't really had much allied health input um, prior to me arriving. Um, so, yeah, it was a very um, big challenge, but something that I really thoroughly enjoyed. Um, obviously, um, you know, not that many resources and things like that. So, yeah, a really good learning experience in terms of um, relying on the skills that you you have and, um, you know, working with your hands and, um, yeah, really just relying on what you can do with minimal equipment. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it was a very, very good year. Um, made really um, good friends and, yeah, really enjoyed the small town sort of um, – yeah, the, the community feel and things you you sort of integrate into the community and you um able to, yeah, just connect with people on a, a different level. And that's really cool. So I really thoroughly enjoyed that um yeah, that year. And then during my community service, then I um yeah, got a job with Health First Group. Um and then yeah, started my process of um coming over here. Um but then yeah, COVID threw a spanner in the works, obviously. Um and so the process was delayed over um a couple of months. Um and so yeah, I was meant to was intended on coming over in about what June 2020 and then it ended up being June 2021. So yeah. I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten that. It was a long process, wasn't it? We yeah. uh, I remember it, it literally went on hold for like twelve months plus and just um, <laughs> visas stopped. Um, yeah. Administration stuff stopped. Uh everything stopped. Uh so through through a bit of a spanner in the work. So did you in that gap, did you do a bit of locum work after your community service or what was what had yeah. you feel? Because obviously you were intended to come over and then weren't able to for for a while. So how did you fill the gap? Yeah, so I um, ended up working in a few different settings. So it was really good to get like a, I suppose, an overall um, idea of, you know, just different fields within physio as well. So I worked um, in private practice um, after I'd finished my community service, um, which obviously is quite different, um, but was a really good, um, I think, um, experience as well. So I initially was working in a rehab setting. So um, like a step down unit from hospital where we sort of worked with um spinal cord patients, stroke patients, um, you know, any like polytrauma patients that weren't quite ready for home and just rehabbing them and getting them strong. And then I also did a bit of work um, in a private practice where we worked in hospitals. So, you know, um, in the wards and in the ICU. And then we would do um, uh, private like outpatients in the afternoon where we were seeing sort of more musculoskeletal and then a lot of um, also neuro patients um, yeah, doing rehab with them sort of from, you know, when they had gone back home. And so how did you find working in the hospital? So, like, do you feel your – obviously what we do is more MSK sort of outpatient type stuff, private practice. Yeah. Is that uh, – like, did, did you like working in the hospital or uh, did you find that you purely really like outpatients? Or, like, I did a few years in the hospital and it wasn't really for me. Uh, but how, how did you find it? Yeah, um, I mean, it's a really interesting place and you really you do get to see, um, you know, a variety of patients. But, yeah, it's not really I don't enjoy it as much as I do um, our patient work and rehab work. Um, yeah, you just um, it's it's sometimes hard to see people when they're that ill as well. Um, so, yeah, it's just not really not really my my favorite area. But, yeah, it was good to just diplomatically that saying that that's not your favorite area. It's interesting, isn't it? I, I found like um, I I felt it was beneficial to work in the hospital in the earlier part of my career. Uh, yeah. And I feel I feel you learn a lot from it. But 
I just found hospitals are pretty sad places and I didn't really enjoy that personally. Yeah. Uh, plus, also, I guess I really like the sort of problem solving aspect of, of outpatients, uh, which I felt like I definitely got during like neurological placements and things in the hospital. Um, some of the other areas I found that I didn't find the problem solving aspect as much. Uh, which is why I didn't sort of gravitate towards it. But yeah, everybody's different. And um, it's a, it's quite a popular thing here in Australia for people to work in the public system for a while. Uh, yeah. I think I think it's a good experience just to kind of get a bit of a, a variety. But I think once you've made your mind up, I, I, I don't know, but I think a lot of people, once they've decided to do outpatients, they probably don't go back to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. So the hospital, I also found, you know, it's a, it, I, it's valuable experience because at least you know, especially when you're dealing with patients that have been in hospital and they then discharge and then they're coming to you, have an understanding of sort of what they've been through and sort of what potential input they've had in that in that phase of, um, you know, where they are, and then you know you're able to, I think, treat them a lot more effectively as well. You know, having an understanding of, okay, cool, this is where you started, this is where you've been, and now we can work from there. So definitely gives you a good, um, a good. I think I feel overall um, understanding of, yeah, the process, I suppose. And yeah, for me as well, you know, we were working in the hospitals through COVID as well. So having that extra like COVID challenge and um, yeah. definitely <laughs> was um, a different experience, but um, yeah. Definitely, definitely would have been. So you went through and you're just finishing the limited registration process of yeah. being a limited registered physio in Australia. Um, so tell us a bit about that because a lot of people are interested in that. And um, I came to Australia and I was registered as a physio in New Zealand. So I sort of did a bit there first um, and then sort of transitioned to work over here through to the general registration. But the main I guess, um, pathway for overseas applicants is a limited registration pathway, which can be um, lengthy uh, and a little bit challenging sometimes. So tell us a little bit about your experience with that. Yeah, so I am yeah, um, getting to the end of that process now, which is which is good. Um, obviously, the whole process was quite delayed for me with um, you know COVID and stuff. So after submitting my initial application and getting the you know approval um, to come over and start working and things, there was a bit of a gap between that happening. Um, but um, otherwise, it's a pretty sort of smooth process, um, and it's quite a nice. I found um, a good way to actually integrate into um, you know how things work here in Australia and stuff and um, obviously because coming from South Africa things do work a little bit differently so it, it you know you you guided really well along the whole process and you've given a lot of support which is something I really enjoyed um, and you know having knowing you've got someone that you can you know kind of contact at any moment to ask questions um, is really good so yeah basically working um, under supervision and having a supervisor um, and then, yeah, just doing, you know, regular check-ins and things is, is really, really helpful. Um, and then, um, yeah, leading up to the exam. So um, I decided to write the exam um, in like the previous June. Um, and so I'd been working for about a year here, which I felt was really good because I had a, a better understanding of like the system and things, you know, um, the way things work in Australia, um, which is which is awesome. So I feel like it does prepare you a little bit better for um, the exam and sort of that expectation um, of the exam. So um, yeah, and then so writing the exam was definitely lots of studying, yeah, um, lots of hard work. The exams, um, three three exams, is that correct? So um, I guess so that's I a bit of a challenge because there's different areas, isn't there? So if you, for example, specialize in musculoskeletal, um, You've still got to obviously do your exams in, in the other areas such as respiratory and neuro. Is, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so I, I'm lucky in that um, South Africa has what they call a flyer stream. So sort of a, a faster way um, of doing the process. So I was fortunate enough to only have to do the written exam. But yes, it's, you know, you you assessed on all areas of physio. So, you know, it's pediatrics, it's um respiratory it's musculoskeletal it's neuro um and you know they can ask anything so um just the the way they ask the exam it's difficult to 
obviously predict you don't know what they're going to ask you really need to be prepared for anything um yeah. and then yes yeah, so i was lucky i only have to write the one exam so um but if i know a lot of other pathways to, just depending on which countries you're coming from there's a clinical assessment as well and then there's yeah. three actual like three separate assessments in each of those um areas so that being musculoskeletal um neuro and then like respiratory cardiac area yeah yeah, good. The flyer stream, I think, is a bit of a newer initiative as well, isn't it? Um, I don't think that used to be available. So um, mm -hmm. I think everybody had to do all of it previously. But by the sounds of it, the flyer stream certainly uh, streamlines that process. Yes. Because you can also do, I believe, a, what's called an equivalent of qualification. Whereas if your university and the year that you graduated, I think, if they've already yeah. assessed somebody from that, um from that university and year then you can sort of do a direct sort of conversion as well which is which is a bit easier yes um yeah but i think there's just lots of paperwork that's involved um yeah. and those kind of things so we were they sort of advised that we go the the yeah. exam pathway because it's just a little bit yeah, simpler good. In, a, in a way and, and you're nearly there which is good news yes <laughs> <laughs> long road yeah it's definitely been a long road because of covid as well so yes um, yes Okay, good. So um, obviously you're based in Kalgoorlie, which is a pretty regional town over there in Western Australia. So um, uh, pros and cons of living in a place like Kalgoorlie. So uh, it potentially is not for everybody, but what, uh, how have you experienced living in a, a, a more regional place like Kalgoorlie? Yeah, so Kalgoorlie is um, is a very nice place to live. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I do enjoy small town living, you know, um, as I mentioned before, like it's really cool to be in the community and you sort of, um, I feel like you have a better connection with people as well. Um, and um, yeah, so it's been really good. Um, obviously, um, Kalgoorlie is quite far from a lot of places. Um, and so, um, yeah, just, you know, travel sometimes is a bit of a challenge. And so we're six hours of, from Perth. Um, so, you know, that's that's a little bit of a challenge. But um, otherwise, um, yeah, Kalgoorlie is nice. There's no traffic, which is great. <laughs> um, you, and you've it's got just, uh, Esperance, is that quite close or re like a weekend trip or? Yeah, so you could go a weekend trip. So Esperance is about four hours away. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, it's pretty, it's really lovely there. Um, but yeah, it's just getting time to go down and yeah, have, have a good weekend there. Um, but good. yeah. You, um, Client-wise, so um, you'd probably uh, see quite a variety, I imagine. So um, I guess that's one of the strengths of being in one of those more regional locations is you you kind of see everything. So all your post-op orthopedic stuff, your private patients, your sports stuff, your NDIS patients, um, you sort of end up becoming a bit of a generalist, I guess. Is that, have you found that in, in Cal? Yes, very much. Um, you know, you get the, I suppose, the general um, low back pain, you know, the chronic issues, um, osteoarthritis. Um, so you get those sort of more common things. And then sport is really, really big in Kalgoorlie. And I have realized that just in Australia in general. Um, but, you know, being such a small town and there, you know, people play a lot of sport. Um, and so lots of sports injuries as well. But then, yes, like you mentioned, um, um, post-op um, kind of rehab, so ACLs, uh, rotator cuff repairs, um, those kind of patients. And then we also get a lot of um, work cover patients, um, you know, injury, um, work site injuries and those kind of things. And then we also see our fair few um, NDIS um, sort of rehab clients. Um, and then we also get the odd few um, DBA. So we really get a good mix of, of patients and just different areas and stuff, which is nice because you, you sort of get Get you able to experience those different things and then from there kind of decide what you like and what you you know prefer to treat and those kind of things but it gives you a really good um general idea of everything yeah good it's one of those things that we've sort of um i guess we plugged people earlier in their careers they they get a wide variety under their belt and sort of patient mileage in in different areas so that they can then just sort of decide where they want to develop so do you Knowing that, like, do you know now what, what what sort of area you want to develop or specialize into, or are you still pretty uh, open on that? Um, I'm still pretty happy seeing, you know, different kinds of patients. Um, I like the variety and sort of 
um, being able to treat different things. Um, but there are sort of a few things. There's been some interesting cases that have come along and I've gone, oh, okay, well, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Like I'd like to possibly know a little bit more about that or, you know, venture into that field a little bit more. Um, but at the moment, I'm, I'm pretty happy seeing whatever comes my way. Um, I do really enjoy um, sort of the lower limb um, rehab and, you know, um, return to sport and return to work and those kind of things. Um, and yeah, really enjoying working with like the NDIS patients as well. Um, yeah, with that like sort of more rehabby side. Um, yeah, it's really cool. It's, it's good. I, I found that with like NDIS clients, the, the regularity of being able to see people and seeing yeah. people for a longer period of time, you can't yeah. really see results, which is quite rewarding. Yeah. Um, also, I, I sort of found with those regional areas, like as you said, with sport, um, they kind of sort of hold those communities together a little bit. And um, you kind of feel that there'd be more sport in the cities, but um, there's loads of sport out in those regional areas. <laughs> and, you, and you see sort of uh, people twist their ankle in the morning or and then they come and see you in the afternoon. So you kind yes. of get acute cases. Um, yeah. I mean, from where I'm from back in England, you, it's harder to see acute stuff like that. Um, whereas, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite, quite rewarding. Everybody seems to in regional areas, um, play sport and party at the weekend. And that seems to be the sort of, uh, routine of how the towns work. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, perfect. So, uh, I don't have any more questions, so, uh, hopefully that wasn't too painful. Um, and, uh, thank you very much for your insights into a few areas of physio over in WA and Kalgoorlie. Uh, so thank you for coming on and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed that and we will catch up again soon, Courtney. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thank you. Bye.